Palmales, Palmales. Coming up next, Peter Evers and Louis Palmales from the Home for Little Wanderers. Peter and Lewis, we're very excited to have you here today to help us celebrate Children's Mental Health Awareness Day. So let's start off learning a little bit about you. Peter, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Hey Kim, yeah. Um, my name is Peter Evers and I work for the Home for Little Wanderers and I'm responsible for all the programs uh, that we have at the home, which is about 22 of them. Wow, fantastic. Lewis, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Sure. Um, my name is Lewis Pomalis. I currently work at the Roxbury House Group Home. Um, prior, I used to live there. Um, but six years, and uh, right now um, I am enrolled in Bunker Hill Community College uh, Psychology and um, overcame some childhood obstacles, but um, right now I'm on the right path. Fantastic. Well, we're so happy to have you here. Thank you. Now, oftentimes people think of the Home for Little Wanderers and they think of it as an orphanage, but it's very different. You guys, you mentioned 22 programs. Tell us about what the home looks like now, Peter. Sure, well, it's not, not a surprise that we're known as an orphanage because for a couple hundred years we were, Kim. Um, but over really the last 20 years, we've really got involved in a, a number of different um, uh, uh, programs and, and initiatives, uh, which really cover the zero through 22 to 25 uh, age range, both in congregate care settings, which means in group homes and residential homes where, where folks live, to providing services in the community, uh, in their homes, working with families, uh, both around behavioral health issues and, and also some child welfare, welfare issues. Um, where we have uh, a new initiative, which we've been dealing with for a couple of years, two, three years, which is the Aging Out, Youth Aging Out uh, Initiative, which provides services for young people as they come out of uh, child welfare systems, uh, mental health systems, and sort of steers them on, a, on the right path towards independence and adulthood. Fantastic, because everyone needs supports and figuring out what supports young adults need to be successful. It's a great, it's a great point. Uh, many people have supports that are natural supports in, in terms of uh, family, extended family, community. Some people need a little bit of extra help and that's what we, we, we try to do. But the main thing that we do is encourage people to be independent, make their own decisions, choices, uh, and be around when things don't work out so well, uh, but provide learning experiences for people. Fantastic, fantastic. And you have a new program um, well, uh, called Roxbury Village, and it's, well, it's got a new location. Can you tell us about that? That's right. Well, this really came from a, um, uh, a need to fill a gap in the service continuum, um, which existed, I think, because people hadn't really recognized that when uh, young people reach the age of 18, they aren't like a light goes on and they aren't going to be... Uh, so to have the tools for adulthood. Instant adult. Age. It Instant just doesn't adult. happen, just right? Right. <laughs> no. right. Right. As, 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 yeah. Yeah. It doesn't. You could testify to that. That's right. right. Um, and so we said, you know, it's really important that we build services uh, around folks uh, post uh, childhood into adulthood. Uh, and the research talks a lot about uh, real adulthood in terms of physical development, in terms of frontal lobe development in the brain, that uh, young people don't really have those tools neurologically and uh, growth-wise to, to, to be independent anyway. Uh, so the idea is really to uh, provide a service uh, after uh, a youth age out, ages out of our group home uh, into an independent living situation where there are supports around that. The idea being that the, these people are fully independent, that we staff uh, minimally to that, expect folks to be in work and college and those kind of things, but are supported with the services that they need. The great thing is that they determine what those services are with the, with the information that they get. And the new service really is to take people through to full adulthood from 18 up to 22, 23. That's terrific, that's terrific. And can you talk, Lewis, a little bit about how you got started with Roxbury Village and, and how it's worked for you? Well, um, uh, DCF, um, I stopped working with them because I was you know, doing my own thing or whatever. And, um, we're just going to tell people that's the Department of Children and their families. Yeah, I'm sorry. We, that's yeah. okay, because we have an alphabet soup, and I'm going to help yeah. you. I'm here to help you interpret. Yeah, so uh, um, things wasn't going well for me in the real world, I should say. And um, 
I made a call to Levette because I was in need. My living situation wasn't wasn't up to par. And um, I made a call to Levette Pitts. She's the program director of the Roxbury House Group Home. And um, once she heard the the news out, the, the news out, she wanted to help me out as soon as she can. And she had in mind of a program to help um, me, well, not me per se, but um, teenagers going through the same struggles. And um, she made a call and she'd been working on this program for um, teenagers like me and she she told me um, don't worry about it she's gonna try to help me out as much as she can and to get me in a safe environment you know and that's what she did and now I'm in a scattered site in West Roxbury um, and then it's just been a good experience so far. Great, great. And tell me about has there been a specific staff that's kind of helped you out and can you talk about how that specific staff? Yeah, um, Anthony Davis He's been, he's known me since 2004, eight, eight strong years of a strong relationship. And wow. he's, um, he's taught me numerous qualities of how to be a man when I've transitioned into the real world out of the home for little wanderers and out of everything. Um, the tools that I would need that will work and, um, and the, the, next, um, the next step in life. And um, yeah, if it wasn't for him, I, I really, by me doing the right thing, you know, it's been, uh, he's been influential to me. Well, he's really been there and, yeah. and helped support you. Kind of, he was like yeah. a go-to mentor. That the good times, the bad times, the arguments, we overcame them, and we was able to keep a strong relationship. Wow, that's incredible! Just someone that you could always count on, that was always yes. there to ask questions of or help you figure out. If the it's thing. about women, it's about life, it's about anything. It was, it, he was the one to go to for me. Right. We all need someone like yeah. that in our lives. Absolutely. Yeah, definitely. Wow, and that's so great. An eight-year relationship is fantastic. Yes. Great. So let's talk about some of the other programs. There, you have a program called the Yarn. Can you tell us about that one, Peter? Yeah, we do. Um, Yarn is a, as another example, really, of how we've been able to really look at what the need is in the community, identify it, and build programs. And you know, I just need to say that Lewis is a living example of how you can be successful if you have long-term connections and people that you can rely on and mentors. And when we looked at the, uh, the service gap, it wasn't just about where people lived. It was, you know, we need some sort of a place in the community where young people who traditionally, they have been hard to engage in yes. systems work. Because oftentimes people don't think that what they need is more of what they've had before. You know, I always think about service yes. planning and service planning in, in the departments that we work with is often people telling young people what to do. Yes. So when we looked at the, the, what we could provide for Jan when we had the opportunity to uh, bid for, for some programs, we said, well, let's create a program that's a little bit different, that is really strength-centered, um, uh, that is, promotes resilience, promotes yeah. recovery, because, of course, the mental mental health issues that are there as well, but also identifies issues such as homelessness, such as drug abuse, such as um, you know, being involved in the criminal justice system. But let's be a little bit different about it. Let's talk about harm reduction models. Let's yes. meet people where they are. Let's not ask them to sign service plans and, and get into what we're telling them what to do, right. but really give the responsibility to the individuals and the groups. There's about 100 people who, who use the, the service, some of them not so much, some of them very intensely. Mm -hmm. We have a drop-in center uh, on, um, in Dorchester, and people come, and they, get, and they make use of life coaches, or they don't, or we, and we go out to meet them. And then there are some traditional uh, issues of homelessness and, um, uh, and educational issues, and we can provide those services there for that group. And it's a, it's a, it's a drop-in uh, and, and a life coach model. We do provide clinical care when needed, but really it is about a, uh, a self-help model uh, that promotes resilience and recovery. Right, because who really likes to be told what to do? Not me, right? <laughs> Not you, but you want someone to go to. Like, it sounds like you had this fantastic coach, and still do. That, yes, I did. That was able to kind of be your point person when you needed one, but wasn't always telling you what to do and yeah. kind of right. was really there when you needed them, and, and that's the kind of supports that we try and provide. So let's talk a little bit about this life coach, coach model because it's different. Because we're used to telling in the child services we told children what to do. That's and right. No one wants to be told yeah. what to do. And then we also, in the adult services, expected, okay, the young adults should know what to do there right. in the adult system, but they don't have the That's skills right. and resources. That's so right. they need a coach. They need a point person like Lewis had. Yeah. Let's talk about that because yeah. it's a different model. It is a different model. Um, and, you know, to the credit of the agencies that we worked with and our funders and uh, uh, credit to the to the folks at the home for being thoughtful about that. That was the bit in the sandwich that didn't quite 
fit that was missing, right. and, and very nicely put, by the way, but this sort of notion of a transitional uh, an, an assistance for people to get to where they can make their own decisions is really what life coaches are, uh, are meant to do. They are um, very much in the same age group um, as the folks that they work with. There's not much difference in age, so they're a very uh, similar in t sort of experience. There are people with lived experience as well who, who are life coaches, and we, we will target people mm. who have those experiences that can share with them and share their stories of, of recovery and, and overcoming uh, obstacles and you know all of the literature nowadays talks about you know peer-to-peer -peer. it yes. has to be peer-to-peer -peer led work both in the recovery world of mental health and of course of addictions uh, who, who's been doing that for a long time right so we said we will will have a harm reduction model and again um, kudos to the agencies who support us because harm reduction has its risks yes. but the risks for not approaching it in terms of meeting where folks are are much much greater because you lose people in, in you know in the process yes. so we said listen this is about dignity of risk this yes. is about um, walking with people traveling in their vehicle with them driving uh, and not us driving and I always think of that analogy because we're there to assist and help when needed uh, and sometimes when we're not needed, we can handle that too. We can yes. say, I get it, I get it, might not be right for you now. But there is the ability to come back when you, when, when you appreciate that things might be different or not. Um, right. So people develop their own plans towards their own goals, whether that be educational, whether that be um, you know, to get into the workforce and building pathways into to careers, meaningful careers careers that take you somewhere rather yes. than just an end point for, for a job, for a, a payment per hour. Um, and so it really is. And it evolves uh, every day within Yarn. It, it is a growing agency. Uh, we have made some tremendous connections um, with uh, people in the community, uh, such as a foundation to be named later, which has worked with us, um, which is um, with the, the Red Sox uh, um, have this uh, um, um, program that helps people. We've, we've worked with them for a few years. The idea really is to connect with people like that. And Robin Lane, who is a, uh, a musician from, uh, from the 1970s, uh, uh, has actually worked with a group of those ones. And they came up with, with making a record. And, and we have, actually do have a music, uh, a room where people can make music and, and, and things like that. Wow. So plenty of stuff going on there. So it's making a lot of connections, because nine out of 10 people get their jobs through networking. Yes. And it's making those connections, those trusted relationships, mm -hmm. like Lewis talked about, with your mentor that helps you really make a difference, that helps you get into Bunker Hill and, and be successful there. Yes. Um, what year are you at Bunker Hill? Oh, no, this is um, September will be my oh, first year. Oh, you're starting. Yes. Oh, fantastic. Are so you excited? going to be a new experience for me. Yes, I am. Fantastic. And you will stay connected with your mentor as you're there? Yes, I will. Oh, great. Okay. And this is a lot of similar, very similar to the work you're doing at Passport to Work. Yeah, the, 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 that really is an initiative because... You know, as I said before, we do cover the the entire growth span, zero to twenty five, and yes. and as um, even you know, fourteen, fifteen, with with the young people that we work with, we're, we're beginning to instill within them the the concept of a lifetime of work, as opposed yes. to a job will be something I get when I leave here. Right. And it really is about saying, you know, um, well. Um, a lot of the research shows that only 68 percent, uh, sorry, that 68 percent of the folks who go through high school don't go to college, and we put a lot of emphasis on the college path, and that's not the only thing that right. there is. So we've, um, you know, developed uh, relationships with the unions uh, to, for apprenticeships, for instance, and employers within the within uh, the Boston and, and beyond region to really sell this notion of, you know, our people can go places. Yes. They have the capability. Uh, and they have the vision uh, to carve out for themselves their future. Yes. Uh, you just have to be available and be able to listen to that. Uh, and I have to say that when we have that and people are exposed to folks from the ARM program or from, from the home, uh, you know, 99% of the time people really like that. And, you know, it is, it, I see, I think you may have said this to when, when we're talking about, it. you know, it's not what you know that's important, but who knows you that's really, really important. So the idea is to expose you know, both uh, our people that we work with, with, our, with employ employers, and build, and build, again, build relationships. And the more success we have, that will bring more, more success and more people going through those systems. Right, and to get people excited about. You just don't want a job. You want something that you yeah. care about, that you look forward to getting gotcha. out of bed, Lewis. And, and that's what I think the home does very well, is kind of connects people to ideas and, and passion about that. And we're just talking about maybe having some internship, 
internships here at Boston Neighborhood Network. Why not? It's a fantastic yeah. place. The interns are always smiling here. <laughs> I've connected two people to the interns. That's what you want, right? Yes. It's a place where you can learn and grow and be excited. Uh, we had the, the gentleman from Frank from Comcast came out to uh, tape one of our meetings. And we had some young adults ask him some fantastic questions about what he liked about his job. Why was it interesting to him? How did he get started in it? I think he's had a few budding film crews just from him coming out and being open and honest and nice yeah. about mm -hmm. what he does. Yeah. So that's the kind of thing you, you guys do really well. It's just Absolutely. opening doors to things you hadn't thought about that you hadn't been exposed to. Absolutely. And I think Absolutely. we need to do more and more of that and, and have it be young adult driven. Like even to come and take a tour of this place. I brought some young adults on a tour and they were like, I mean, just the building is the impressive. Building is amazing. Isn't it cool? Yeah. It's all environmentally <laughs> correct and yeah, stuff. Fantastic. It excites me when I come, you yeah. know? Um, even the toilets are special environmental. <laughs> I'm like, I'm saving water, you know? Um, but that's what it's about. It's about, you know, we just don't want, I just don't want a job. You know, it's boring. I mm -hmm. want to be something that I feel like I'm making a difference and it matters if I come or if I don't come. Yeah, absolutely. So let's talk about the home is that kind of program. Why do you love the home, Lewis? What, what, what makes it so special? What makes it different? I mean, they it's, it gave me a, like a second chance to yeah. be honest, because I used to, I, I just used to just never listen. Like I never wanted, wanted like you said, nobody. You would never want to be told to do. Yeah. And these people make you feel like you're at home. It's like they make a home-based right. um, living situation for you, and you, I just don't see how. You know what I mean? Like it's you want to be here. You know these people make you. Yeah. They open, they welcome you with open arms. So it's like. If these, if you want help and you got, if you want to head in the right direction, these are the people you need to, you need to be connected with because they wow. open a lot of doors for you, wow. a lot of opportunities. Wow! And they helped you connect with that support. Yeah, they yeah, kind they of did. taught you how to do that, and they also gave you a little leeway when you didn't know exactly, exactly. how to do it. And that's exactly. what I think is important when you when you're dealing, especially with transition age youth, mm -hmm. because you're emerging adults. Mm -hmm. You don't have everything figured out. I still don't have any, everything figured out, so don't worry. <laughs> you don't need to have everything. A work in progress. Right, we're all work in progress. Wouldn't like we be it. boring if we were perfect, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, but it's, it's having that kind of place where you know that if you make a mistake, you can still come back. And we mm -hmm. all make mistakes, and that's how we grow and how we learn. But having that kind of environment is fantastic to have and be able to support young adults. So if you're thinking about what kind of things do you need at the home in order to, some people might be watching the program and say, what kind of things do you need? How could I help? What kind of resources are you looking for if someone wanted to be connected with the home? Yeah. Well, I mean, I think mentor, you know, we, we talk about connections, yes. you know, long-term connections. Uh, it was interesting when we had our Youth Aging Out uh, last meeting, which is an advocacy group who really, you know, lobbies for change for young people, both in the, uh, in the child welfare world, but also in terms of, uh, you know, broadly speaking around education and, and funding for further education. Um, our website, uh, thehome.org, has a lot of information about volunteers and mentors were really what we looked for. And when we look for mentors, we look for people who are in it for the longer term, not, yes. not one and done, which we do need and, and people give so much of their time. But right now, I think we're looking for people who are willing to invest time in young people, which is once a week uh, visits and, and sort of to talk about what their uh, uh, history has been like and how yes. they have overcome ordeals and, and, and begin to introduce young people to opportunities and yes. you know we have um, we have a, a, a program that's called getting beyond the system which, which we have every year and it and basically what it does is it's a roadmap to dealing with the world which everybody needs yes uh, <laughs> can and, I get uh, one yet? yes <laughs> absolutely and it you know it's, it's great because it talks about uh, certainly I remember when I was when I was a teenager and uh, I had a job and I was late uh, three times and I got uh, a, a warning for being late with my employer. And I was so annoyed at, being, at getting a warning from my employer. <laughs> right. Didn't think it was anything else about me not being able to get out of bed in the morning. <laughs> getting some feedback around that, yeah. that you, know, you actually are in charge of your destiny here yeah. and you have a role to play in that is, is wonderful. Mentors do that in a way that, that, that our staff can do, but it's so much better when you get that backed up with somebody who volunteers, takes their time yes. and, and, get, and pays forward. Because what happens is then our people become you know, the next uh, generation of mentors. And, and when we look at it, we're yes. looking to do that. We're, looking, we're making an investment now so that it'll be payback later. Absolutely. And there's something about someone who's close in age or who's been there, Absolutely. done that, and they kind of say to you, 
you know what, they're not going to keep paying you if you're not yeah. showing yeah. up on time. Exactly. Or you know what, if your attitude doesn't change, yeah. they're not going to tolerate right. that much mm -hmm. more. And coming from someone who's connected to you, it's that much more weight to it. Yeah. You know, it makes a difference. Absolutely. And those are the kind of things that really make a difference, is to have that kind of person that cares. Because sure. um, if you feel like someone's just getting a paycheck, like, oh, I'm listening to Lewis because I need to. And, <laughs> okay, I'm filling out the form. Who wants to be part yeah. of that, you know? You're not going to show up. And, and your services are really geared towards the person, not towards Absolutely. the numbers. Absolutely. Sensitive and that's very critical. Yeah. Um, are there other things that would be helpful thinking about what other ways might people connect to the home? Yeah. Well, you know, getting involved uh, is great, and we have uh, a number of initiatives that I, I would absolutely refer people to the website, thehome.org, to look at the services, look at where we're, where we're at, and think about the, the, the mentoring uh, issue. Um, we have um, uh, a connection with a number of uh, em employers in the um, uh, in the in Boston and around. And if if there is anybody that's interested in in talking to us about how we get involved in in, in work programs and things like that, that would be wonderful. Oh, um, fantastic! And um, if I can just give the number of, of the telephone Absolutely. number, of the home. yeah, that would be um, great. The the uh, our, our main number is, it's an 800 number, so mm -hmm. it's easy to remember, which is why I'm looking at it here, <laughs> which is 888-HOME-321, uh, uh, so H-O-M-E and then 321. Great, uh, and we have and a great to... shot of, uh, on, uh, of your website oh, right. and the phone number oh, right. right up there and a great picture great. of a young adult. That's great, and, and, and if they could ask to speak to the volunteer department or myself, Peter Evers, then that would be fine. Great, great. Now, you also do great fun events that are like, really uh, neat to participate in. Can you tell us about a couple of those? Yeah. Um, well, actually, we have a, a main fundraiser this year, which is called Voices and Visions. Uh, and the great thing about Voices and Visions is that it is a, a collection of artwork that is done over the, over the past year. Uh, and we have the event this year on, uh, uh, at the Seaport Hotel. Ooh, uh, nice. and, and we'll be displaying the artwork. Again, the, the information about uh, Voices and Visions is on the, on the website. Mm -hmm. And we'll dis be displaying the artwork for people to see and actually bid on to, to buy. And the, and the theme this year was, was Heroes, which has been great because oh, nice. you know, it means a different thing to, to, to everybody. Yes. And, and, and our uh, youth and our, our children have, have considered who their heroes are and, the, and they're reflected in the artwork that we do. The yarn, on the other hand, is incredibly uh, involved in, in the community and, and you know, goes to uh, the, the, a number of young people went to the Boston Ballet, for instance, uh, oh, nice. this year, and, they, and people get exposed to things that they wouldn't necessarily be exposed to. Right. Um, that sparks that excitement, that passion. That's right. Drama. The, um, we have a lot of um, like musical uh, interface as well with the community, as I've said. And that basically, if a, if, if a young person has an idea about something they want to do, the, the group will decide that, and then we'll pursue um, uh, you know, getting a, a, something together for them. Great, great. So we're wrapping up, Lewis, but I'd like to know, kind of for us to end on, it'd be great for you to tell us a little bit about where do you see yourself in the next five years? I kind of see the home as your launching pad, and I can't wait to hear what you're going to do in the next five years. Where do you see yourself? Well, I'm really not positive yet, but I see myself... You don't need to be. Just, yeah. just we're, 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 we're using our vision. I see myself with a, a bachelor's degree in psychology. Nice. Um, living on my own, of course. Fantastic. Um, Riding around in the car because I hate taking the seat. I hear you. I hear and you. Maybe with a beautiful lady by my side. <laughs> nice, so, nice. I'll be looking forward to the next five years of my life. Oh well, I'm excited for you, and Thank I hope you. that you get your vision. It sounds fantastic. Appreciate it. And uh, I hope that you uh, you have your bachelor's degree in hand, and, yeah. and you're driving around in your car <laughs> with a uh, beautiful woman by your side. Sounds fantastic. Yes. Well, I'd like to thank you, Lewis, for coming on the show. I really appreciate you, you coming and sharing your story. And, Peter, thank you for coming on and, Welcome, and telling us about the home and for helping us celebrate Children's Mental Health Awareness Day because it's really such an important day to, to broaden awareness for uh, both children and young adults about the services they need and how they can be successful. So thank you. Great. Thank, thank you. you very much. Thank you. And I'd like to say thank you to our audience for once again tuning in to Picking Up the Pieces, where we dare to persevere and we try and help transition age youth reach their full potential. We ask you to look out for that, that young adult that might be in need of some extra special support so they could really achieve their true success. I'd like to say thank you to the Department of Mental Health for sponsoring our show, and thank you to the audience for tuning in. Have a wonderful afternoon.